Hi everyone, it's Ken here. Let's break in my new workshop. Now that my new mill has arrived and been set up, I'm getting ready to uh, get back to projects like my clock. One of the problems is that uh, the mill bed is just a, a series of three T-slots, you know, which is standard on a mill, but it would be much more useful if I had a fixture plate. So that's what we're gonna build in this video. The fixture plate will be uh, connected to the T-slots with, uh, you know, these locating holes here, which are countersunk. And then there are quite a few uh, features I've put on this. The There are a number of uh, one half half inch uh, 13 TPI holes throughout here, and the reason I chose those is because that's the standard uh, clamping mechanism that's used on this mill. I've also put in a bunch of uh, 1032 holes, which are the size that my other mill had, because I still have uh, you know, clamping mechanisms that work with those. Additionally, I've added rows of uh, drilled and reamed holes for 3 8 inch dowels, and these are going to be used for aligning uh, things uh, in X and Y. Now, you know, I've mentioned in other videos that it doesn't really matter how big a mill that you have, you're oftentimes going to find yourself making things that are bigger than your mill. Now, this uh, plate is 24 inches uh, across and, and 12 inches this way. Uh, it's also a half inch thick. It's, it's being made out of a piece of uh, cast aluminum, so it's flat. But my mill work area, work envelope, is uh, basically where you see the high density. Um, so, in order to mill this, we're going to have to do uh, the, uh, the left half here in one operation, the, the right half in another operation, this center part that I can reach in another operation, and the remainder of the bottom here in a fourth operation. It's just the nature of things. So, let's get started. I'll begin by working on the left side of the plate. The first thing I need to do is use my Heimer to find the, uh, the edges of the plate. It's really sweet using this thing. And once that's done, I use this, the same tool to find the, uh, the top of the plate. Let's set these all in my DRO. The first step is going to be to spot drill all the holes that need to be drilled on this side. Make sure my coolant is pointed at the tool. And off we go. Next I'm going to drill the pilot holes that are going to be used to clamp the fixture plate to the T-slots. And now I switch to a 3 8 inch end mill to open up those holes to their final size. And now I'm going to uh, machine the countersink for those uh, screws that are going to go into those holes.
Next I'm drilling the holes for the 1 half 13 threads. And now I'm back to the 3 8 inch end mill to uh, open those holes up for the uh, final size for threading them. What I get to do now is use a thread mill to uh, actually cut the threads. Now what this is doing, it's a single point tool. It's doing a helical interpolation of the thread pattern. I do this in two passes. On the first pass I'm, I'm going uh, two thirds of the way of the thread depth. And then on the second pass, I'll go the final third of the thread depth. The beauty of using a thread mill is that you can pretty much do any size thread that the, uh, that the tool will fit into the beginning slot. Um, you have just a tremendous amount of control. Plus, it's mesmerizing to watch this. And now the left side of the plate is complete. Next, I flipped the plate around and performed the operations on the right side of the plate. I've now placed the plate in its almost final position. It's temporarily bolted down to the T-slots and I'm making sure that it's uh, square against the back. It's within uh, roughly four thousandths over a 14 inch span which is, which is just fine because we'll be using the dowel pins later to uh, make that perfect. I'm going to use the center of this hole as my XY zero and I'm using my Heimer here to find the center of the hole. First I find the left side of the hole. And I set my DRO to zero. Then I move over to the right side. And when I find it, my DRO is reading the diameter of the hole in X, so if I divide that value in half, I will have the center of the hole in X. Now I do the same thing in Y. I find the bottom of the hole, set my Y DRO to zero, And then I find the top of the hole, which again is the diameter, this time in Y. And they should be the same. I divide that value in half, and now I know where the center of the hole is. When I move there, set my DROs to X0 and Y0. Now I find the top of the part and set my Z DRO to zero. And now we can get started. First we're going to spot like a bazillion holes.
Now I'm going to pre-drill the holes for the 1 half 13s, uh, as well as the holes for the uh, hole downs to the T-slots. Then I switch back to the end mill and I open the holes up to their final diameter prior to tapping. Now I'm drilling the uh, 1032 holes. These are the exact size ready for tapping. Now I'm drilling the holes for the dowel pins. This drill bit is about eight thousandths less than the final size that those holes need to be. And finally, I'm going to ream the holes one one thousandth larger than the size of the dowel pin. It's a three eighth inch dowel. Test fitting some dowel pins. And again, I'm test fitting, and they're a nice tight fit, which is the whole idea. Now I've switched over to my tapping compression head. This thing's really cool. It lets me do rigid tapping. It controls the speed into the hole, stops the spindle, reverses it, and comes back out again. The tapping head uh, has some give to it so that the tap won't break. I tried this with the uh, half 13 uh, threaded holes. Um, the problem there is that the machine just doesn't have enough torque because uh, you need quite a bit if you've ever tapped a hole that size. Uh, and that's why I switched over to a uh, thread mill to do those, as you can see I'm doing now. And the last step in this operation is to run my chamfer mill around each of the holes to give them a nice finish. I actually did this in each of the other steps, I just didn't show it. And that side of the fixture is now complete. Before I mount the fixture plate permanently, I'm going to spread some uh, WD-40 on the mill table. This is uh, just to prevent rust. What I've done is I've cut a piece of uh, 3 8 inch PVC to place under the fixture plate. And the reason I've done this is I may want to drill additional holes into the fixture plate, you know, as I'm using it, you know, if I need new holes in different places. And uh, I certainly don't want to drill into the mill table. So this just gives me a cushion under there. So I'm bolting the fixture plate down uh, to the T-slots in its final position. And you can see that off camera I uh, machine the holes for the bottom of the plate. So it's actually uh, completed now. 
And now I'm going to use the dowel pins to align the plate to the machine. I'm pressing some uh, one, two, three blocks up against the dowel pins. And now I'm using my uh, DTI to make sure that the plate is square to the table. It took some fussing around to get it right. But as you can see now, the DTI is barely moving. Those increments on there are a tenth of a thousandth. So you can see that the plate is within a tenth of a thousandth over a 14 inch span, which is, well, plenty for what I ever do. The last thing I'm going to do now is engrave uh, a rectangle around the work envelope of the machine. I have the machine at its maximum boundaries right now. So what this will do for me is I'll always know when I'm mounting a part to the table uh, if the machine can reach it, which is a nice touch. I should have thought of this many fixture plates ago. See? I know I can reach that part. Obviously that's a part from my clock and I promise we'll be getting back to that really soon. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. And if you'd like to keep up with my other projects, please click the subscribe. If you're interested in my other projects, you can find them at my website, which is www.zeman.com. I will see you all soon.